hands-on with the new remote app for the fourth generation Apple TV. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac, and as you can see, I have the new Apple TV remote app installed on my iPhone 6S. If you are a developer, you can head over to Apple's developer website, download the IPA, install it via iTunes, make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network, launch the app, tap the Apple TV that it discovers. It'll ask you to authenticate with a passcode. You just put the passcode in, and just like that, now you're paired with your fourth generation Apple TV. Now, this is a brand new Apple TV remote app built from scratch for the fourth generation Apple TV. So once you pair it, you're gonna see an interface that looks strikingly similar to the Siri remote. Now, there are some differences, obviously, because it's software, so it can do some things that the Siri remote cannot do, uh, such as displaying and now playing interface. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for the most part, you get one-to-one -one functionality between the Siri remote and the new Apple TV remote app. So you have a menu button, you have the play pause button, you have your Siri button, you even have your home button there. And of course you have the extra large touch surface. And this really dominates the Apple TV remote app. It allows you to input selections. It allows you to move the cursor on the Apple TV fourth generation. And it's the primary way to navigate throughout the Apple TV interface. And just like the hardware Siri remote, the menu button in a lot of cases works sort of like a back button. Let's compare these two remotes side by side so you can kind of see exactly what you're getting. I might want to turn that around. Yeah, that happens all the time. But as you can see there, the similarities are evident. Even the way that the touch surface is separated via the different tone, um, you can see the dark black here, and then you have the lighter gray up top, which helps users identify the touch surface, well, most of the time at least. Um, but you can see those are similarities that these two remotes share. And most of the buttons are there as well, although they're laid out a little differently. But the volume buttons or the lack of volume buttons on the Apple TV remote app is one big difference between these two remotes. The hardware Siri remote allows you to control audio components via those dedicated volume buttons. You don't have those on the new Apple TV remote app. And one reason why that may be is that the iPhone lacks an IR blaster unlike the Siri remote. Okay, so now let's demonstrate using the new Apple TV remote app with the fourth generation Apple TV. So if I swipe on the touch surface, I can move about the interface. And if I tap the touch surface, I can select just like that. And the menu button sort of acts like a back button in a lot of cases. So you just tap menu to go back, tap menu to go back like that. Okay. And we can tap menu to go all the way back. And the Siri button works just like it does on the Siri remote. So tap and hold and say, what time is it in Chicago? And Siri will tell you just like that. And you can also dictate passwords and usernames as well. All right. So I'm going to select the Incredibles. I'm going to tap the home button now just to show you how you can get back to your home screen just like that. And long press gestures work as well. So you can put your device to sleep easily by long pressing on the home button. And there's also the now playing button, which is an obvious advantage over the standard hardware Siri remote because you have this whole new interface that you can interact with. So the Siri remote and the new Apple TV remote app share a lot of similarities, but there are a lot of differences as well. The main difference is the lack of tactile feedback that you get from the hardware remote because you can actually press in and click the touch surface on the hardware remote but at the same time, the remote app brings a lot of new functionality to the table, such as a now playing interface that we showed you earlier. This allows you to view album artwork right on your iPhone. So you have a dedicated area for your now playing content and that encompasses both video and audio playback. And this now playing interface has a lot of room to grow. You see you have your skip back and skip forward 10 second buttons there. On the hardware Siri remote, you had the touch surface that allowed you to do that by clicking in on the right or left side of that surface. But with the software, Apple had to rethink things a little bit and uh, put that in its dedicated nail plane view. Of course, you have your scrubber there, which is nice. But the thing about that is that the scrubber doesn't actually show you where you're going to land in the nail plane interface thus far. So like I'm saying, Apple has a lot of room to grow here. No doubt that you're going to make improvements in this nail plane interface. I can just see that happening in future builds. Now, when you launch a game, you're gonna see this new game mode button and tapping this button reorganizes the Apple TV remote app into a more gaming centric control layout. So you get a landscape control layout. You get the buttons on the right side of the screen. So you get your select and your play pause buttons. And then on the left side, you have your touch surface for controlling the action on screen. Now, obviously, depending on the type of game you're playing, 
that's going to change. It's not going to translate one to one. For instance, with Alto's Adventure, you're basically just using one button for the entire game. So really, it's kind of not necessary to use game mode in this instance. And game mode lacks tactile feedback. So that's going to automatically make it inferior to a hardware controller with tactile controls. Even when it comes to like just the Siri remote, it's going to be inferior for a lot of games just because it lacks that tactile response. Now, one nice thing about the Apple TV remote app is that it can use the iPhone's accelerometer and gyroscope to control games that support that feature just like you can with the hardware Siri remote. Now, the biggest difference between the new Apple TV remote app for the fourth generation Apple TV and the old remote app is that not only can you insert text and type text right on screen, but you can also use Siri to dictate and search for content, which is really awesome to be able to do that right from your iPhone is the best feature that the remote app brings to the table. So I can tap and hold the Siri button and say, Mac OS Sierra, and it will dictate text just like that. Also works with passwords and usernames, and of course, normal searches throughout the Apple TV interface. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about the new updated Apple TV remote app. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.